Hey everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of automating a browser. And in particular, we're going to talk a bit about the web page itself, uh, the underlying structure, and how we target those elements on the page when we're actually automating a browser to perform a test. So I've got uh, Google open here. And let's first kind of take a look at what we would do if we were just walking through this as a user. So if I'm gonna search for something on Google, typically I'll like visually identify that this is an input, right? So I click the input, then I'm gonna search for something. Wallpaper sounds nice. I'm gonna hit enter and I get my results. So I've carried out my steps as a human, mostly by identifying elements on the page visually when we're automating a browser, though, we're typically using the underlying structure. Um, so it's not uh, we're not visually interpreting the page the way a person is. What we're doing is looking at the code underneath and using that to identify the items on the page that we want to interact with. So let's take a look at the underlying structure here. The way we do that in a browser is by using the dev tools. So I'm in Chrome on a Mac, I'm gonna go view developer, developer tools. Most browsers have something like this. So Firefox has something like this, uh, Safari, and they generally look and work pretty similar. So you can do this in any browser you'd like. We get this console down here and I'm gonna switch over just to this elements tab. So every web page that you open is represented underneath by um, code and basically structure that defines what the elements are and how they're structured, how they're appearing. That's what you see here. So um, this isn't expanded. This is kind of like our base body that encompasses everything. Uh, if I choose this little arrow selector tool, I can start highlighting things on the page. So if we come up to this input that we're using for searching, I can click on that and it's gonna show me where that input lives um, within the DOM. So the document object model, the actual underlying elements here. Um, you can see like various elements and nested hierarchy happening. So this is an input element, meaning it's designed to take input from the user. You'll see tons of div elements. Those are generally kind of like structural. Um, you also see things like forms. And in this case, here's a dialogue that's not showing up. It's, it's hidden, but it's in there. Um, so I'm not going to dive too deeply into what all these elements do, but when we want to target an element on the page, for instance, if I'm automating a test that's going to search Google, I need a way to find this search input. Uh, and what we do is um, we're able to specify um, what element we're looking for using attributes and hierarchy and a number of different methods. Um, that we define in a syntax, basically a string saying, I want this input element that's named this or is inside of this form uh, and so on. So uh, I have a blog post titled um, CSS Selector Strategies and kind of gives an analogy for this, imagining you're in an auditorium and there's like a hundred people in the crowd um, and you need to start identifying people. You know. So maybe some people have a name tag on, you could say the person with a name tag that says Joe Smith. Um, but if they don't, you have to start looking at other things. So maybe the person with the jeans and the tank top on, or maybe the person three rows back, two seats in, um, or maybe the person next to the really tall male or something. Um, so you, you can start to use these different attributes and things to pinpoint which person you're talking about. Um, in this context, in the browser, you're basically using these attributes and their locations to try to pinpoint um, the element that you want to target. So um, I've got this input here selected, and you can see there are a number of attributes that we can look at using. Um, some are probably going to be better, better than others. So uh, one that's useful is a, a name attribute. So this uh, input is named Q. It's kind of like short for query. Um, so that might be a good one to use. Um, you can see other ones down here. It's got a title, um, search. So that might be a good attribute to use, and maybe we can match it on that. You might see some other ones that aren't so great to use. Um, for instance, here's like a big mishmash of letters and numbers. That looks like something that's probably random and is going to change all the time. So I don't know that we'd want to use that. 
Um, you also might see things that are probably pretty common. So here's autocorrect or autocomplete. There's probably a good chance that that attribute is used at various points on the page. So it may not be so useful. Um, so, okay, let's say we decide, let's start by um, using this name equals Q attribute. We're gonna try using that. Um, so let's walk through putting together just a simple selector to target this element. I'm gonna switch over to the console here. This is gonna let me use JavaScript and there are some built-in um, methods that we can use to um, search for the element in the DOM. So um, there are actually some nice shortcuts for these, but I'm gonna use kind of the longhand and we'll use the shortcuts in some later videos. So I'm gonna type document and that's basically a reference to the web page itself. You dot and then uh, the methods I'm looking for are query selector and query selector all. So this basically allows you to search for a single element or a list of matching elements respectively. I like using query selector all. And the reason for that is because it's gonna turn up all the elements that match. And when I'm generating a selector for an element um, for a test to actually automate something, there's usually a very specific element I have in mind. And so I wanna make sure that I'm matching just that element and only that element. Um, whereas query selector will just find the first one that matches and that may not always be what I want. So we'll do query selector all and in here, this is gonna take a string. Um, so there are primarily two syntaxes that you use to define the attributes to, to match uh, an element and that's CSS and XPath. They're both really similar. The syntaxes even look similar, just subtle differences. Um, there are some trade-offs between them. CSS is fairly popular and a little more widespread because it's also used for styling elements. XPath is maybe a little clunkier, but a bit more powerful. So uh, in most cases, you can generally do what you need to do with either, but there may be situations where you choose one over the other. This query selector all method expects CSS. So um, we're going to type a CSS selector in here. What I'm going to do is type input because that is the type of element I'm looking for. So you can see here this, this first string here refers to the, the type of element. And you can see Chrome is kind of auto completing this and is saying there's, there's actually eight input elements on the page. So this selector just finding an input element is finding eight things. So that's not really going to be specific enough. What I'm going to do is add brackets and we'll dive into CSS syntax in more detail in another video, but I'm going to do name equals Q like we talked about. And here you can see it's finding a single element. And when I expand and roll over this element, you can see it's highlighting it on the page. So I know that's the element I want. Uh, and this selector is going to target it because it says, give me the input element where the name equals Q and it matches. So now I can use this selector when I'm automating the browser to refer to this input. So we'll go ahead and set up a really quick test in Ghost Inspector using this element. Um, I'm going to add a test here. So we'll call this test Google search. We'll start it on google.com and we'll add our steps. So the first thing I did when I was walking through this myself was I clicked on the input. So in here, you can see we'll take an element CSS selector or XPath selector. So I'm going to do input uh, name equals Q and I'm going to click it. Um, now I'm going to add another step and I'll use that same selector. This time I'm going to assign my value. So I search for wallpaper. That's what I'm going to assign into the input here. Uh, and then lastly, I uh, pressed enter. So again, inside of the uh, input element, we'll do a key press, we'll say enter. So what I've done now is I programmed those three steps that I carried out uh, manually um, by clicking the input, assigning wallpaper and pressing enter. So I'll save this test. We'll give it a quick run. Um, well, my video is in the way. Give it a quick run. Uh, and this principle is going to apply regardless of the tool you're using, um, whether it's Ghost Inspector or whether you're coding in Selenium or Cypress or Puppeteer. 
this principle generally um, applies across the board when you're automating a browser. So you can see here our test passed. Uh, you get the steps that we that we carried out. And if I watch my video on Ghost Inspector, you can see it's going through and doing the things that we did. So at a really basic level, that's how you go about starting to automate a browser and building a test. Obviously, there's a lot of complexity that can come into play in terms of targeting these elements uh, and figuring out the best, most sustainable way to target it. Um, and then, of course, you're generally having a, a longer test flow and doing more complex things. But at a very fundamental level, this is what you're doing when you're automating a browser. You're coming up with a selector for each of the elements and you're carrying out steps. And if you're using a recording tool like our recording tool, it's basically doing that for you. So it's looking for the element that you're clicking and assigning, and it's automatically doing the process we did of going through the DOM and saying, what makes sense here? Should I use a name? Should I use a title? Uh, and formulating those selectors for you. So now that you know a little bit about that, I'm gonna end this video here and uh, we'll follow up with a video that dives into a little more detail on CSS uh, syntax, uh, XPath syntax, and go a little deeper in some more complex scenarios when you're coming up with selectors.